Well, hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. On today's videos, I'm going to be flipping through some of Castle Art's new colouring books that have just been released. There are a set of four. This is um, the first one, which is a flowers book. I'm going to show you all four, but today's video is going to concentrate on this one. There is a Christmas book, a fantasy colouring book, and last but not least, a castles colouring book. So let's have a little look at these. They are brand new products that have only just been released. So let's see what we think. I'm not going to do a test of different mediums on all four of the books. I'm going to do a bit of a test in this one and a little bit of a test in the Christmas book. So if you are interested to see how the paper performs with both wet and dry mediums, if you stick around for this video and also check out the Christmas one. Okay. So as you can see, all four books are in the landscape position. Position, is that a correct word to use? Let's say position is the right word to use. They are landscape rather than portrait. They're A4 size. So inside the book, let me just move these things out of the way. So we have a little bit of an intro page. They also give you some suggestions of suitable media. Now I have flicked through the books and I can't find anything unless I'm missing it to tell me what the GSM, which is the paper weight for this is. So I will be interested to see how it holds up to um, sort of ink tents, pencils, gel pens, that kind of thing. I have some more suggestions here in the back of suitable materials that you can use. Of course, these are all Castle Art's own products. Now, one of the things that's synonymous with all four books is you do have some colour reference pages at the very start of the books. So there are 36 images of different florals within this book and you have a reference picture for each one. Now, as you can see, I've already cut these out and replaced um, replaced not replaced. You know what the problem is today? The problem is that I have nobody else on chat with me live and I'm sitting talking to myself. This is the problem. I just can't find the right words. <laughs> so as you can see, I've cut these out already for ease of reference with the images in the book. So I'll just give you a quick flip over of the different ones. Now really, I could have gone back and edited that bit out, but I know how much you guys enjoy my random craziness. So I'm just gonna leave it in and hopefully a few of you are chuckling. <laughs> So these are all of the different blank images that you have. Now, I know a lot of people struggle with colour combinations, colour palettes, that kind of thing. I think this is a really good idea because I also struggle with colour palettes. And what you could probably do, if you're not sure which um, colours to use for different pencil ranges with these, I would suggest you take a nice photograph of the one that you're interested in colouring and maybe use like a free app like Coloured Pencil Picker where you can upload the photograph that you've taken and it will give you an indication of some of the major brands of pencils that you can use. Just a little tip there. So let's have a look at the rest of these images. I'm just going to remove these pages out of the way for the time being. So all of the images are single sided. It does tell you on the neighbouring page what the flower is um, and give you suggestions for colour as well. But of course, you do have that image that you can refer to at the front of the book. So these are all A4 size. Um, they have said at the front of the book to try and make it suitable for framing. One thing that I would say that I've noticed is it's not a lot of room to actually get your scissors or a cutting knife into this space between the spine and the page. So I think if you wanted this to be a true A4, you're going to have to do as I'm doing now, really get into the spine and sort of break the spine of the book and then hope that you can get this out evenly. That's one thing that I would pick up on. It would be much easier if these pages were perforated. So we'll keep flicking while we're talking. So you do have this explanation on the other side of the page. I'm not going to show you all of these. I'm just going to concentrate on the line art to save moving the book. So nice sized images, um, nothing too teeny tiny to try and fiddle about trying to get your pencil into, which is another good point. 
very bold line art as well. Um, I'm not sure for myself, I like the line art to be quite that bold. Um, maybe you would want to try and cover up some of these black lines with maybe gouache or white pen or something. Um, that won't be something that I'll be testing necessarily today just because of time and things. Whoops, that's me just getting my uh, charger cable, giving that a little boing at the side there. Sorry about that, guys. Try and watch what I'm doing as I'm flipping these pages. So 36, all bordered like this. So they are set up for that framing if you so desire. Very consistently bold line art through all of this. Something else that I have noticed is with all of these little marks and things, um, I find that quite difficult to see where the definition of the petals is. So for something like this, um, I think without the image at the front of the book, I would struggle a little bit to actually colour this in. In fact, let me just grab, so this is the chrysanthemums. So if I just grab the, the image that goes with it, I can see what they have done, whoever's drawn it, has tried to pick up these tiny little dark shaded areas in the middle of that flower there, which is what all of these little bits and bobs are. For me, that's not very clear line art for colouring. Um, I would find that quite difficult. I will always give you an honest review of these books if there's things about them that I like and don't like. This is obviously only my opinion. Um, you guys will formulate your own opinion. Um, looking on their website yesterday, they are retailing at $24.99 a book. Um, I'd find that quite steep actually for a colouring book. I've never paid that amount for a colouring book ever. I think the most that I've paid for one is about £15. Um, with their discounts on their website at the moment, they are coming in at about $17.99. I would still find that a little bit steep um, if I'm being honest. I'd be interested to see what the paper quality is like. Um, it's quite smooth, there's a bit of tooth to it. Reasonably thick, I'm not sure how it's gonna stand up to wet medium. So I have my ink tents um, standing by and we'll give those a little dip and test real quick. So I'm gonna keep flicking. So there will be a video of the other three books in the series as well, but I'll be uploading that separately for you. And like I said at the start of this video, I will only be testing products in the flowers book and the Christmas book. Let's have some jasmine flowers. See so again, we've got another one that's terribly, terribly detailed. But for me, um, I can't really see where the individual petals are going because it's just such a mess of line art here. Um, you know, hats off to whoever drew this. I, I couldn't draw something like this, but... As a colourist, I would struggle to know where I'm putting my pencil and what colours without the um, reference picture from the front. And even then, it's going to be a little bit difficult, I think. Some of these are a lot more clearer than the bigger flowers. It seems to be the ones with the small petals that are a little bit more tricky. So we have some marigolds. Orchids. Oh, pansies and violas. I love pansies so much. Peony. I'm just going to give the spine another little nudge there so that it lies flat. Periwinkles. Peruvian lilies. I'm not going to pronounce the um, what I think is must be the Latin name for them. If I can't get my words out in a normal sentence, I'm not going to go so well with the um, <laughs> Latin descriptions of these flowers, am I? Terrible. Ah, poppies. Beautiful. Very apt considering I'm filming this on Remembrance Sunday. So I'm filming this slightly in advance, which is why I'm not doing it live. Um, I haven't, although I haven't been given an official release date by Castle for these yet, they are on their website. So I'm very slightly confused. I've messaged my contact there to say, uh, what's going on <laughs> so I'm trying to get myself ahead by filming these for you and then I can upload them onto YouTube and make the listing public once I get the nod from them I haven't had the nod yet that's a tulip hmm. it's a tulip that's very very open now if I didn't have the description on the page next to it and underneath I would not have had a scooby what that um, flower is at all Crikey. It's got 
lilies and irises. Wild roses. Wisteria. And that is us at the end. Now, um, what you do have at the back here, and this is the same with all four books, is you have a test your colour page. Now, the one thing I would say about this, um, I feel myself this is an error doing it on the back page. So the outer cover of this book is um, cardstock. It feels like it's very slippy, very shiny. There's no tooth. Now, I know that I'm going to have to work very hard with either wax or oil based pencils to get an accurate test on here because it's just too slippy. I think what they would have been better placed doing is maybe sacrificing um, or adding another page at the back here so that you have a true test page to test your mediums on rather than than this which is way too glossy love the idea i'm just not convinced it's quite in the right place so let's have a little look at a bit of a test so i'm just going to try and choose um something that's reasonably simple i'm not going to color a whole image with you guys this morning i'm just going to have a go at let's have a go at number two which is the autumn bouquet just something to put a little bit of colour down um, for you guys so that you can see. And then I'm going to move on to one of the other books on a separate video. So I'm just going to give the spine a bit of a squish down so that we've got it lying nice and flat. Now the um, reference image for this one is here. We have lots of browns, um, golden yellows, some nice reds and things. So... Let's just have a little look at the at the ink tents that I've got next to me, the swatching sheet. And let's just grab a couple of colours to have a bit of a go with. So I would say maybe a bit of the Sicilian yellow would be a good one for the darker areas. Uh, Sicilian yellow. And what are we going to put that with? I would say the cad yellow, maybe a bit of the golden yellow as well. So I'm not necessarily going true, true to form of the picture, but just something to give me the, the right tones, really. I'm just going to keep my reference in front of me so that I can see what shade is going to come out like what. I'm just going to give these a quick sharpen. Apologies for the noise. Not only does the Dahl 133 that I'm using regularly sort of dump pencil shavings in places it shouldn't it's also quite keen and noisy it's a real game-changing sharpener though and one of my lovely followers carol sent this to me and thanked her many times if you're listening again carol thank you very very much so i'm going to um just move this reference image slightly to the side so that i can still see what i'm doing what we'll do, we'll just do a little bit with ink tents. I'll pop a little bit of pencil over the top. We'll see how the paper is stood up and then I will stop the video and start filming the next one. So what I might do with this, I'm just going to keep it slightly off to the side here. And let's start putting some colours down. So time for a quick sip of juice and the goggles to go on. Oh. Notice how I'm not talking so quick now. I must have been particularly nervous about talking to nobody. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> Very strange. Right, so I'm just having a wee look at my um, my colours. So my Sicilian yellow is going to be the the one that's got more of like the the browner tones in it. So I'm just going to find a couple of a couple of the darker bits on here. So if we have a look at the reference picture. I'm just going to go for a couple of these petals at the top here. So we have some darker yellow running through, which is what the line art has given us here. I don't know whether to maybe stick a bit of sienna gold in there as well. We can darken it up with some ordinary pencils. So I'll just go ahead and layer this down. We've also got some darker yellow coming in here at the very edge of the petal. And um, down in this bit of the line art as well. And then we'll have a little bit going up there as well. So this is just about plotting down um, where you want the ink tents to sit. You can tweak this with either a second layer of ink tents or in fact you can do as I do which is 
glaze things over very, very slightly um, with ordinary pencils. So a little bit of cadmium yellow going on now. So just going to go either side of this. And I think the golden yellow I might add um, sort of at the very edge. So you don't have to press very hard with these ink tents. They're very highly pigmented and a little bit of these goes an awfully long way. Um, if Derwent ink tents is something that you're not familiar with or you want to know more, have a look in um, the rest of my videos because I have done an ink tents for beginners session, which just shows you a bit of the different ways that you can use them. And I do have several other um, ongoing videos as well that will give you um, a bit more information on how to use these pencils. Just a touch of golden yellow. Um, the reference image doesn't have orange on it particularly, but I'm going to warm this up very slightly with a pop of a slightly brighter colour. Now, you know, as with every reference picture, it's just for reference, really. What this will help you with if you're not too sure of what you're doing is where you're putting your shadow and your darker shades and things in. So quite useful, really. I'll just pop those to the side and let's get the water brush going. I'm just going to do that um, out from underneath the uh, camera at the moment. So I was doing some ink tents on another page last night, which is why this is um, already full. In fact, let's just move the plunger up because I used quite a bit of the water last night. And it just stops feeding if um, you don't move the plunger down as you go. So we're just going to test that on the back of the hand. We want to make sure that it's not soup, but we want to make sure that we do have a nice layer of wet going, which we do. And let's get some ink tents down on here. So I'm go you're going to work from the lightest areas into the darkest areas. So I'm going to go ahead and activate um, just the very edge here where I know I've got some of the lighter yellow going. And we will smush this down into this darker colour that we've put down in here. It's actually coming out quite bright rather than dark, but it's a very nice colour combo, so I'm quite happy with that. So I'm just merging a bit of that golden yellow into the cad yellow and just taking it down into this shadowy area. So something to note already, the paper is very, very, very puckered. So this is only with one layer of ink tents with a little bit of water. Not sure how it would work with say watercolour paints for example where you might want to do more than one layer. I haven't put a page underneath either to save the page underneath this one because I just want to see if you would have to remove the page from the book to colour it safely or whether it can actually cope without getting the page underneath wet because of course these are sample books so it doesn't matter as much. Um, now, um, we've got some berries and things, so let's use some ordinary pencils on this um, while this is drying. So I'm just going to grab some of my Castle Arts Gold. Um, let's see. It's a kind of an orangey red, isn't it? So let's just grab a couple of these and see how sort of bright they are. So let's grab a red left my swatching sheet at the other side of the uh, the room and I can't be bothered to know that's too pink. I can't be bothered to go and get it so <laughs> gonna do it like this. Oh that's nice. So maybe let's try those two. So I'm going to use some gold pencils for this. So Castle Arts Gold, these are oil based rather than wax. And I've just grabbed two different reds, scarlet red and red ochre. So with the scarlet red, let me just move this around. So we've got little red berries at the top. Just going to move this very slightly because I don't want to put my, uh, my hand in this, which is drying. So looking at the reference picture again, let me just stick this up top here so you can kind of see it may not see it with my hand in the way but so we've got the light sources drawn in here so I'll just go ahead and add some of that darkest red in I just want to give this a few minutes to dry up and then we'll try some ordinary pencil over the top 
so just going in with the darkest red so this one we've got the light source at the top here so put some dark red underneath here and a little bit in between there and then grabbing that red ochre I may use a bit of light orange on the top it's uh, my neighbour banging in the garden he's got the most beautiful garden um, out of all of the houses around here including mine and um, those of you that are of a certain age like myself in the UK will know um, somebody called David Bellamy who was um, very keen uh, botanist and um, plant type person and we, we've nicknamed our neighbour David Bellamy. And he always seems to um, go out in the garden and start having a tinker about while I'm doing this. It's not ideal really, is it? <laughs> so a little bit of marigold now. There is not orange as such on the reference image, but we've got quite an orangey yellow coming into this flower. So as with everything, use your reference picture, but tweak it if you so desire. Now with the light source having a heavy black line around it, um, I don't find that very useful particularly because it doesn't look like um, a light source, it just looks like I've missed a bit. Um, so line art wise, um, I would have preferred it to have just been a berry shape and then using the reference picture, I would have shaded around that so that there was a natural white area. How are we doing? We dry yet? Yeah, we're not too bad. So let's grab a couple of yellows real quick and see how, what this is looking like. Um, she says, looking at the yellows. Um, so I have reorganised all of these because I couldn't cope with that blue that was in a random place. It was really disturbing me. So I'm going to grab a slightly darker colour. So I'm just eyeballing it at the moment. I don't have my swatching sheet with me. So go nice and steady and see how this is looking. So a little bit of cadmium yellow light. Let's just see if we can smooth out some of the wrinkles with this one. So all I'm doing is the areas where I'd put some more of that sort of orangey golden yellow of the ink tents. This is quite a golden yellow. I'm just using it to smooth out. And then I've got a nice blingy yellow. So this is lemon yellow. So this saves you putting a second layer of ink tents down. Again, just smoothing things out. And then I've actually grabbed a little bit of terracotta. Now I don't know whether this one's going to come in a bit dark actually. Ugh, wrong colour, Suzanne. That's a no. Uh, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Let's look at browns. What about cinnamon? Yeah, much better. Look at the state of that. That's way too red. That would look shocking. So a little bit of cinnamon. Going nice and steady here. I'm just going to darken over any areas where you would want a bit of shadow coming in. So the gold will sit really nicely over the top of, of your ink tents as well. There's no problems with that. Same if you've got these the soft touch um, wax ones, they will sit nicely over the top as well. You don't have to have um, a certain brand of pencils to do this. You can do it with whatever you've got. So we've got a few more sort of lines and things going down the petals. So let's get a better point on this bad boy. devil dropping bits all over my desk we're gonna have words later i don't know dull one three three is obviously not not very happy at, um at me saying that it drops sharpens everywhere but it's just proved my point hasn't it <laughs> so we'll darken in a bit more down here as well this is by far how i prefer to use ink tents get a base in do your work on top with pencil once the base is in I'm 
do a bit more of um, sort of some more darker lines on this one. We've got a darker area on the petal here as well, which we can just add in with the pencil. So I'm just looking at the reference picture. We've got some more sort of darker browns and things on here, but I'm not, not going to go too mad with it. I just want to see how it works with um, how it works with the ink tents as well. Okie doke, let's see how it's done underneath. So it's dried okay. I was a little bit worried with how much it had puckered, um, just how it was gonna how well or badly it was going to dry. And it hasn't dried too badly on this side. Let's have a look underneath. So the petal is under my finger, which is actually over this image here. Now nothing has gone through, which is good. And if I run my finger here, it has slightly compromised the paper underneath. A little bit of dampness must have got through. So what I would normally do, which I didn't do in this case because I wanted it to be a true test, is I would have a piece of um, cartridge paper. This is an off a watercolour pad, but I just use it as a swatching thing and put it directly underneath where you're working and it just stops that dampness from sort of going down through the page. So I'm not going to colour any more on that one today. I'm going to move on and do a little video of one of the other ones now. So like I said at the start of the video for this one, this is one of a series of four books that Castle Arts has brought out. Do have a look on my channel for the other ones. It will be this book and the Christmas book that I'll be testing different media in so that you can see how it will interact with your pencils. I do hope that you've enjoyed the video. I can't believe I couldn't get my mouth actually round the video at the start, but I'm not going to edit it out because I know it's going to make several of you that know me well laugh. <laughs> so happy uh, shopping, happy colouring. Like I've said, they do retail for $24.99, which I feel is way too steep for a colouring book, especially in the current climate um, when everybody's struggling. Um, there are things I like about the books, things that I don't like so much. But do remember, if it's something that you decide you want to have a look at, I do have a 30% discount code available, which is Suzanne30. So it's S U Z A N N E. Three zero, And if you've already used that code before, find a friend or a family member who has another email address and get them to order it for you because you can use the code again. So that's everything from me. Take care of yourselves and I will see you back online with the next book review. Take care. Bye for now.